Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we will be introduced to formal grammars. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, upon completion of this session, the learners will acquire a proper understanding of the formal grammars. Now, if you recall the session, different phases of compiler, there, during the discussion of the syntax analysis phase, we observed when the stream of tokens is passed to the syntax analysis phase, as the outcome, the syntax analyzer produces the parse tree. And for generating the parse tree of the arithmetic expression, the parser makes use of the grammar, which is specific to that particular form of arithmetic expression syntax. And if the yield of the parse tree is as same as the syntax of the expression, then there is no syntax error. Otherwise, there is. Now, coming to this grammar, this is what we are interested in. Now, particularly this one, which we have used in the syntax analysis phase, is called the context free grammar or CFG. Observe, this is called grammar. Now, this one is a bit different from the grammar of natural languages, like English. This is the grammar of formal languages. Let me illustrate. Let's take a grammatically correct English sentence. Learners are awesome. Well, indeed, you all are. Now, observe the sentence. Here, the sentence has three words, learners, are, and awesome. And it is written in this particular order. Replacing the noun learners by another noun, say, nesso, the verb are by is, that is another verb, and the adjective awesome by good, which is another adjective, we get another grammatically correct English sentence, Nesso is good. Well, I hope that's what you feel about us. So, the structure of the sentence, learners are awesome, can be stated as noun, then verb, and thereafter adjective. Now, verb and adjective form the verb phrase. And noun and verb phrase, in this particular instance, is forming the sentence. Now, generally, these noun, verb, adjective, verb phrase, sentence, are called the variables or non-terminals. Whereas, the words learners, nesso, are, is, awesome, and good, these are called the constants or terminals. Now, why is so? Let me explain. Consider this particular structure, noun followed by verb followed by adjective. Now, for noun, we have two options, learners and nesso. Now, once we select learners from the available choices for the place of noun, it is fixed. We can't choose anything else now. Similarly, for verb, we have two options, are and is. Selecting are for the verb's position means we have made up our minds and now are has been fixed for the verb's position. Then again, for adjective, we have two more options, awesome and good. Let's select awesome and now the adjective's position has also been fixed. We can't undo that. Basically, when the structure had these, that is the variables or non-terminals, we had options to choose from. That's why these are termed as variables. Contrarily, once we generate the sentence learners are awesome, we are actually fixing the places of these. Basically, we are terminating the generation process. And that's why these are called constants or terminals. So, since these are terminating the process of generation, that's why these are called terminals or constants. And since these give us the options to choose from, and also these don't terminate the generation process, that's why these are being called non-terminals or variables because the outcome may vary based on what we choose. Now, coming back to our discussion of grammars, we have the set of non-terminals in one hand and the set of terminals on the other hand. Now, let's recall the generation process for this specific instance. Sentence can be written as noun followed by verb phrase. Then again, the verb phrase can be written as verb followed by adjective. Now, noun can be written as either learners or nesso. Similarly, verb can be written as either are or is. Finally, 
adjective here can be rewritten as either awesome or good. Now, if our vocabulary is restricted to learners, neso, is, are, awesome, and good, that is, these words only, and our sentences are only of the form noun followed by verb phrase, and verb phrase is verb followed by adjective, then we can describe the formal grammar using four tuples N, T, P, and S, where N denotes this collection of non terminals, T specifies this particular collection of terminals. Thereafter, P is this specific set of rules which will help in the production of sentences, which is nothing but the strings of terminals like learners are awesome. Finally, S denotes this variable sentence in here, which will start the derivation of sentences. Now, in the year 1956, this genius linguist, Avram Noam Chomsky, gave a formal definition of grammar. There he stated, a phrase structure grammar, which means a generative grammar, that is a grammar which generates, or simply grammar, is NTPS, where N is a finite non-empty set of non-terminals, that is the collection of non-terminals, should be finite, because since it is a grammar of a language, naturally it should be finite. Also, it should not be empty because if it is empty, we won't be able to generate the terminals. Then T is a finite non-empty set of terminals. Here also the terms finite and non-empty are specified for the same reasons. Now N intersection T will result in phi, that is the set of non-terminals and the set of terminals are two disjoint sets and don't have anything in common. Now, S is a spatial non-terminal, that is, S belongs to the set of non-terminals, which is called the start symbol. Now, why it is called start symbol? Because from S, the process of derivation will initiate. Finally, P is a finite set whose elements are of the form alpha can be rewritten as beta, where alpha and beta are the strings over N union T, meaning they may be a mixture of non-terminals and terminals, or only non-terminals or only terminals. Nevertheless, alpha must have at least one non-terminal because we already have seen without a non-terminal, we cannot generate anything. And also, the elements of P are called production rules. By the way, for your information, way before Chomsky, probably in the 6th to 5th BCE, the ancient Indian grammarian Panini used formal production rules and definitions in order to describe the formal grammar of Sanskrit in his noble work Astadhyayi, that is, Ast Adhyayas or eight chapters. Now I believe you all have the proper understanding of formal grammars. Remember, it is actually defined by four tuples N, T, P and S, where P, that is the production rules, are the most important part of grammar and language specification. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe the classification of formal grammars. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.